Good morning, friends. Today we are going to continue our animal senses learning by focusing on the sense of touch. Look at that handsome face. Do you know what animal that is? That's right, it's a walrus. Keep in touch. When you sit down to supper, you can see what you're eating. But what if you had to feel what was on your plate to tell if it was edible or not? Many animals use their sense of touch to find and identify food before they eat it. Touch is also important for getting around in the dark, for finding shelter and mates, and for avoiding danger. If you were a walrus, you'd have rows of stiff whiskers around your mouth for feeling. You'd poke your whiskers into the muddy ocean bottom to feel for food. When you found something the right shape and texture, such as a clam or crab, you'd dig it out with your tusks and eat it. Feel for your food. When you have lunch or dinner with your family, invite them to feel for their food with you like a walrus. You'll need a large bucket or bucket, a shovel, or like a big spoon, sand or soil, edible and inedible objects such as an unpeeled banana, peanut in the shell, unpeeled carrot, spoon, toy, sponge, a bandana, or a blindfold. Uh, so maybe this isn't for dinner time, maybe this is snack time activity. Fill a large bowl or bucket with sand or soil bury the objects in the container. Blindfold your friend and have them poke their fingers into the bowl and identify the objects they feel. You should pull out only the edible items like a walrus does. Have your friend bury different objects in the container for you to identify. You should find that common objects are not too difficult to identify but some food items may be harder because you're not used to feeling them without seeing them at the same time. Your fingers are acting like the whiskers of the walrus, feeling for food you can't see. Feeling safe. Your fingertips are the most sensitive part of your body. Other animals use different body parts for feeling. A cat's whiskers are terrific feelers. Insects have sensitive body hairs and birds use their feathers as feelers. No matter what they use to feel with, animals rely on their sense of touch to help them avoid danger. Slugs and snails avoid heat and sharp, dry surfaces that can dry out their bodies or cut their soft foot. The star-nosed mole has tentacle-like feelers around its snout that help the animal find its way through dark underground tunnels and keep it from going out into the open where it might be seen by an enemy. I think these guys are some of the funniest looking animals. They are funny. Some animals and plants survive by being untouchable. The prickles of a porcupine keep most predators far away. The stings of bees and wasps make insect eaters stay clear. Even prickly or thorny plants are too painful for plant eaters to munch on. When you put on your clothes in the morning, you feel them against your skin, but after a few minutes, you no longer notice them. That's because your sense of touch grows tired when it's constantly stimulated by the same thing. Being able to ignore the feel of consistent touches helps an animal focus on new feelings that may mean danger or food. Ah, uh, like it's collar, yeah. At first they don't really like their collar, but then they kind of get used to it, don't they? Now we're going to use the touch of raccoons. Raccoons practically feel their way through the world. They don't have good vision or great hearing, but they have long and amazingly sensitive fingers. They can use them to break into our garbage cans and then feel for the food they want. Feel the clothes on your body. Feel your feet touching the ground. Do you feel heavy? Light? Do some parts of your body feel cold and some warm? Feel the sun on your skin. 
Feel the wind on your skin. Which way does the wind blow? Feel your heart beating. That's how we're gonna do raccoon touch. Now go outside, make your observations using your sense of touch. When you're done, do your recordings in this page that's attached to Seesaw and tell me about what you observe, what you think, what makes you say that, and what you wonder.